So let's analyze the awesome footwork of Holger Rune. Now, this video is courtesy of Tennis on 11th on Instagram. Make sure you follow their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. Now, I would highly recommend that you go out and film yourself playing so that you can compare what you're doing with what you're going to learn in this video. So the first thing is when you serve, you should be landing inside the court. And we can see Holger landing inside the court. But after you go in, you got to make sure you hop back. And that's what he does. Watch how he hops backward. So now his heels are on the baseline. So he lands inside the court, but then he hops back. You want to do this in case the return is hit very deep. Then you're not pinned with a ball near your feet. Now, one of the things that is often talked about, and there are a lot of coaches, <laughs> in fact, this guy's coach, <laughs> um, who talks about this all the time, who will always say, you got to get your body weight going forward uh, on your shots. And it's simply not true. In fact, many times players will move back as they're hitting in order to hit better shots. And that's because rotation of your body is more important than getting your body weight going forward. So here's a simple idea. If you're moving backward as you're hitting the ball, try pivoting on your back foot. And I'll show you what I mean here. So here's Holger's back foot. What he is going to do is try to rotate his body while he's hitting this two-handed backhand. And he's going to do that by bringing his front foot backward. This is what I call a back foot pivot. So watch. He pivots on his back foot. Now he has a little hop with this foot. But even if he doesn't hop, the idea is, is still the same. The back foot is the pivot foot, and he's moving the front foot back. This allows his hips to turn. So here his hips are basically facing this lines judge right here, that lines judge. And then look here, his body is now facing the net. So there's rotation. And the foot that's making the most movement is actually his front foot going back. So you don't always have to think that your weight has to go forward, but sometimes moving backward, pivoting on this back foot, allowing that front foot to move back is how you accomplish that task. So... He then recovers back a little bit, back toward the center again. Here's the split step right there. By the way, the split step, you want to be in the air. Like right now is when the opponent is hitting the ball because he's in the air and that synchronizes his brain and his reaction time with when his feet are going to hit the ground. So here is what is called a closed stance fallout. When Here he's leaning forward. So since he's leaning forward, now he's going to pivot on his front foot. When you're leaning into a shot, you pivot on the front foot. When you're going back, as I mentioned, you pivot on the back foot. So look at this. Notice he pivots on this front foot. So even though he is hitting with a closed stance, and notice his front foot is pointing off to the side. I know it's very common that people talk about having the front foot trying to point forward. Simply not the case. You're just going to pivot on this front foot. And notice, though, he finishes in an open stance. So close stance ends up in an open stance. Again, you do that because why? Rotation of the hips is paramount. So you've got to rotate your body. Now, this is a cool little, uh, uh, you know, footwork right here. Watch what he does. First off, when you are toward a sideline, and we can see he's right along the singles uh, single sideline here, and you're trying to move toward the center of the court, what you will not do is push off of the outside foot and take this inside foot and move toward the center. That is not what happens. What actually happens is you take this inside foot and you move it under you, and then you will actually move with the outside foot toward the center. Watch this. Watch how he takes his right foot, and he moves it under him. He's actually moving his right foot away from where he's trying to go. This is called a drop step. So he drops it under him, and watch how he actually does a little karaoke, and he actually steps behind. The reason he's doing that is he's trying not to turn his hips. He's actually trying to move back slightly away from the baseline. He's not trying to move parallel to the baseline, but he's trying to move away from the baseline to give himself a little more room and a little more time but he wants to keep his hips facing forward. So he does not want to cross in front because if he did that, he would have to swivel his hips 
And that would actually make him late if the ball comes back to the same corner. So he actually steps behind and that helps him to keep his hips facing forward because once he takes that step, then there's the split step right there. He's actually, that right there is his split step in the air. Really cool thing. So when you are outside the court and out by the doubles alley, you actually want to take this inside foot toward the inside of the court and you drop it under and you drop it actually away from where you're trying to go. That makes it very easy for him to lean the direction he's trying to go and it's actually faster. So here is what is called an, a mogul stance. A mogul stance is this move right here. It is an open stance on the run and you stay in an open stance. So an open stance is when your right foot is on the right and your left foot is on the left. That is an open stance. doesn't matter where your toes are pointing. It just matters which foot is on the right and which foot is on the left. So he is in an open stance right now, but watch how he hops and then he ends up in an open stance. So that's almost like he's skiing and he's moguling, right? So his left foot stays on the left, right foot stays on the right. Notice his follow through up above his head. Please start following through like this more often. Uh, you know, so many players, they always finish, like recreational players, they always finish down by this opposite hip. And to be your best tennis player you can possibly be, you've got to finish up above your head. It's great to impart more spin. It's great when you're a little bit late. Uh, and you can lift the ball. Here's a simple sidestep. And here's another mogul stance. Now here, you can see he finishes up over the shoulder. So again, the follow-throughs can change. Here is a crossover step. Now, the crossover step was different than the drop behind step. And the reason is because he has time to square up his hips. Let me show you this. I noticed this when I was preparing for this video. Remember here... He stepped behind. So watch how he steps behind. And that is because once he does the step behind, he immediately has to split step. So that's his split step right there. So watch again. He steps behind and then right there is the split step. And then he immediately starts running. So let's look at this one. Why does he step in front? Why is he willing to move back slightly but turn his hips? And that's because when he crosses over, he has another step, and that's the split step right there. So since he knew he had an extra step available to him, he was willing to cross in front. It, right here, he did a cross in front because he knew he had time to square up his hips by the time the shot was hit by the opponent. Now, the best way to practice these techniques is at home with a Topspin Pro. You can get a Topspin Pro using my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. I absolutely love the Topspin Pro, and I know you will too. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment, playercourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Please go out and film yourself playing matches and compare what you learned in this video to what you see when you review your own footwork. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.